Hello everybody, welcome to my nook. This is Kimberly from Journal Breeze and thank you so much for stopping by today. I am very excited to bring you my design team project for chapter one papers on Etsy and Instagram. And they have come up with these incredible washi strips, right? Faux washi. And they have uh, kit one, kit two. Kit one is primarily what I'm going to show you with the samples I have to show you, which are, I have like six or seven now. It's very addictive. I've just been crazy about doing it. So um, can't wait to show you. But these are what they look like when they come out of your printer. And the, the biggest difference between kit one and kit two is that kit two has some thicker strips in it. These are considerably thicker. This is also kit two, so there's also pages with thinner ones, but you can see the difference in the width is quite a bit. So I'd say in kit two, it's half and half, half big, half small. And, um, and this is also kit two, because I've already cut up all of kit one. So, um, so yeah, okay, so I'm gonna show you what I came up with. Wow, the lights are so bright. It's sort of getting washed out. Hmm. Let me see about this. Let's see if it looks better on here. Yeah. All right. So this is a envelope. So it'll be a flip. And it can be either, uh, I can put the tag in from above, or I can put the tag in from the side. And I'm going to wait to finish it off uh, when I figure out what journal it's going to be in. But I love it. I just think it turned out so beautifully. And there's quite a variety of washies in, in both of these kits. I happened to pick a lot that were the floral. and um, But you'll see with other samples that there's also much, um, you know, quite a variety. So. I try to make samples with different strips. But anyway, um, this is what I did on each one. I put the strips around the envelope. I used different envelopes also to make a bunch of different samples. And because I was intrigued, I wanted to see. Now, for those of you who know anything about antique quilts, I was inspired by the log cabin pattern, which I'm sure if you are a quilter that came to mind but it actually was impossible to do the log cabin pattern the way it would be correctly done because you have so few strips on two of the sides with the traditional log cabin you have to have equal number of strips on all four sides or at least two and two um, and they have to be in opposite directions and the reason that that matters is because it makes for a beautiful braid that goes up each corner and by braid I mean you know two pieces come together and form the right angle at each um, intersection but that is not what was able to happen because of the fact that I just shared so a lot, some of the times they had to come together like that and then there would be you know another uh, 45 degree angle here and the last ones on the upper part of the envelope because the envelope envelope was two and a half inches even longer and I had to um, cut that off because it got too big for any journal so this one measures about seven inches now and I think the width is six so another thing I learned in making these samples is that when you have an envelope with a rounded corner like that, like I had here, you have to run the papers um, to, over the rounded corner. So you'll not be putting, gluing the paper, the strip on the paper. You'll be gluing it down here, down like here, and then over like here. And then you'll get the square. I figured that out by the time I got here, but I hadn't figured it out when I was up here. So I cut a couple of corners that um, that fortunately, just by chance, matched this. So it really looks it looks good. But had these been a different paper, I think they would have stood out and it would have looked, you know, not very good in my opinion. So um, 
I don't I didn't have that problem after because I did the overlap properly and so I learned some things and I'm going to go over those with you and then the final one I'm going to do some gluing but it's a it's a long process it takes time and I um, it's just I just decided I was gonna make the samples and then just show you a little bit on one you can figure it out it's not it's not hard you just have to have an idea in your head so that's what I'm gonna help you with today all right so first I wanted to show you well I should show you the rest of the samples okay so that's the first one I made and then this is a you know a giant tag that I put inside so all of them have a tag or a picture that will become a tag on the inside and I used some papers by um, paper cameo and then um, and this is also paper cameo and then the rest of them are the uh, washi strips because the first one I made I wasn't really sure how it was gonna go so <laughs> but after I made it I thought it was so pretty I thought yeah this should be something I share as a design team project so yeah okay that's the first one and then the second one I made is this one and this one had a rectangular skinny envelope or a shaped window and that lent a new set of challenges and in the picture the tag inside sh there's actually it's not quite wide enough so it ended up bringing its own sense of a strip on either side but that's really part of the picture and not something that I glued in there and then I wanted this to show so I cut this one fussy cut this strip so that Paris would show and then I put the other fussy cut strip here and I, I love it I think it turned out really well and this is also going to be a top or a back depending on how I use it and my recommendation is that you kind of get a color way in mind obviously this one was pink floral and cream and this one I wanted to go with the green and yellow um, and then the aqua green was because this was kind of an aqua uh, very muted green blue I thought this paper went beautifully and again uh, this is kit two kit two kit one kit one I think that's kit one I think that's kit one kit one so really I would get both kits if I were you because they both offer so much and um, what what you want to try to do is get as many strips as you can on a side without having to do too much extra stripping of a strip all just because unless you love to cut up strips um, then you could but otherwise if you can have see how much smaller this window is so this envelope is smaller and then this window is bigger so what this what I'm trying to say is that on the smaller envelope I had one log on this side two log logs you know that's what I'm thinking log cabin one strip on this side two strips on this side one two three four or really three and a half strips on this side and one two three strips on that side so each side got progressively bigger and that's what you want to do because it makes it so much more interesting this had two this had three this has three and this has four so the more strips the more variety the more interest there is involved okay and then my next one used kit two and the fat strips and here you go so this is a very wide strip as you can tell compared to say this one or that one this is a fat strip this is a fat strip and I actually even went over Put this paper over this one a little bit this is the fat strip but oh my gosh don't you love them I absolutely love them and again the idea here is to try to get the 45 degree angle going so in my mind my mantra when I make these is um, the mantra and what actually can happen when you have uneven sides is two different things but keep in mind that what you want to do is try to go over a strip and under the next the one at the other end 
So if you can go over on one end and under on the other, you're going to get this braided feeling at least some of the time. Here, there's nothing to go under. So you've got this strip like this, which just looks like a strip. And it's only one, so it's not the end of the world. This one, I put it over on this one and under on this one. But really, ordinarily, you wouldn't have this going under here and coming out. But I just decided to do it anyway. And you can do the same thing. Um, but this has got a nice set of braiding, as I call it. This side did not braid. Uh, this also went under and then over here, which it shouldn't have done. But had I brought this blue one over, then, I then it would have been over here and over here. And then it just looks like a strip. So without the braiding, you end up, it's just not as interesting without the braiding. It's just, I'll show you. I made a sample without the braiding so you can see how simplistic it looks, which might be what you're going for sometimes, which might be exactly what you need. So, uh, you know, keep it in mind as an option. It's a lot faster. So, um, so then this piece, I actually had another piece underneath here. So another tip for you, two tips. One is that if you do something too light on the edge, it was sort of a grayish, whitish piece, then it just seems like it doesn't get bordered. It just seems like, like your strips fall off the page. So I ended up putting a darker strip uh, on top of the one that I had, which is my second tip. It's so nice to be able to just glue something on top and get rid of all airs. <laughs> so don't be afraid. Um, I also glued this piece on top of here when I was all completed because the one underneath here was too light. And again, I got that feeling it was falling off the edge. So there you go. My next one is really different. I used prints that I would normally never use. Um, they have a lot of objects that are identifiable. They have a lot of white in the background. But I love the red. I love the black and white. I thought that these pieces went together beautifully. And then I never use my, find my pictures until I'm completely finished. When I'm completely done, I get an overall sense of a time period. And then I pick my what's going to go behind my window based on that time period. So this is early 1800s. And this is um, from Rachel. These look like embroidery, silk embroidery pieces. She's got two, or they, chapter one, have two wonderful strips of silk embroidery. And they're wrinkled looking on the paper so they're, they're really they're beautiful so um i played up the embroidery idea you know an embroidery pattern this is embroidered um this would be a drapery material This one was mainly that I wanted to go with that yellow and green look. And then to remember that I had this lady, it was so incredible to, to re recall that I had her. So this is like pre-Civil War period, you know, 1850s or so, with that dress and that hat and these little dress prints. If they were fabric, they would be dress prints, and these would be upholstery fabric. So this is 1940s. Could be 30s, could be the Depression. Those little kids, I mean, to find this picture after I get this whole thing done, I thought, oh my gosh, what am I going to put in there that really, you know, goes with the whole feel of it? And this is from Ruby and Pearl. Oh, this is Ida Jane Designs. And this is Ruby and Pearl. Oh my gosh. Oh, those little kids. So I built up a whole story in my mind because the parents, these two kids are related. I think they're twins, and this is the daughter of dear friends of their parents. And they came over for this party, but it's a parent party. But they had to be there. <laughs> so these are the party foods, and, of course, they got to have strawberries and strawberries and ice cream. And... Um, this says the old established nursery seed and implement business. So it's some kind of an adult business party. 
And then I had put this whist drive paper on here. So then to find this car was to me just an amazing coincidence. I loved it. The fruit, again, you know, orchard that this implies. And these little flowers are the kind of thing you'd put on your kitchen curtains. And this might be also on your kitchen curtains. So it just, I thought, turned out really great and that the picture really made it. So you might be inclined to pick your picture first, but um, I think if you picked your picture and then did all your strips to fit that picture, you might find that they don't really look all that good when you put them together on it. And so you'd be better off doing, you know, pick your strips and use them as you can, but you might have to add some in or take some out and then pick your picture. And I think you'll have a better, a better chance. And this is a good indication of how you can start to go downhill um, and how, you know, it can become uneven. And unless you get a ruler and really draw a line every time, this is more likely to happen. It shows up really well in the last one but when it happens in the inner one sometimes you can cover it up by putting the bottom paper a little higher i didn't actually notice it enough to to play that game here or i would have um and then this one i added after because of the way that i had put it i didn't feel that this is actually the exact piece that comes after that but it doesn't really look like it's connected but it is connected hey kitty so um, so I put, I added it there, and that gave me more of the right angle look that I was going for. But again, it's not possible to have right angles all the time. You can see none here, none here. I mean, there's ultimately a right angle, but you're not getting the braided effect on either end of this piece right here, or on this either end of this. So it's just the way it is with this uneven situation but it still turns out fantastic and then I wanted to show you an example of what it looks like when you don't go for the braid effect at all so I laid all the strips across here and then strips down here and I could have done it in two but I did it in three to try to add some interest and then I put a strip across each side because this was very skinny this is a very skinny window a very very ordinary bank envelope <coughs> but this picture, oh my goodness sakes, absolutely phenomenal. This speaks to the 1920s to me. This is another piece of embroidery strip from Chapter 1 papers. All of these are Chapter 1 papers, and I think all of these are from the second kick, except maybe this one's from the first. And, um, and this lady is taking a picture of the dog and the little girl. You can see the camera. And she's like in a park. It reminds me of this town I used to live in. And, oh my gosh, it's just such an elongated picture. And it just gets shown off so beautifully here. But my taste would just so much rather have had braiding going up the sides and then the braiding comes down as much as it can with only a strip on each side to to really you know bring your eye in so that's what happens with with good braiding is that it brings it brings your eye in or out and then when you don't have braiding your eye doesn't get brought in or brought in you see the difference braiding not braiding so I probably maybe could have braided better on this side. I don't know. I, you know, I tried in every case to do a lot of braiding. And it just ne wasn't working out because I couldn't go beyond the page to have that braiding happen. I had to cut everything short to fit the envelope. That's the problem. It would have braided if it would have been longer. Okay. But anyway, you can do cute things. This is going to be a pocket. Haley! And then lastly, oops, there is one more. Oh. It's another pocket. So this is actually what I cut off of here. So don't, Haley, it's okay, sweetie, whatever's going on. Um, don't throw this away when you finally cut it off 
This was a bank envelope that I cut off this end. And this is what was left. And I purposely wanted to have one strip's worth on either side to just see how that would work out, to see how that would look. This is, again, it could be either or. So I decorated, if I use it as a flip, I'd want the back decorated. And then this would be on the front. Or it just could be a pocket and not be a flip. Or it could go on the side and go like that. Or it could go across the top of the journal page and go like that. Any way you look at it, super fun and super fast. Oh my gosh, super fast. So there you go. This, I hope, has excited you. It's super excited me. I really, really love it. Okay, so now to give you a demo, I'm going to show you one more way you can lay your strips out. And that is in a herringbone design. You know, herringbone are V's, the build-in V's, the build-in V's. Okay, you can see that V. And again, the log cabin, that's, that's braiding all the way up to the end. And in a log cabin, you have two small squares, and then you've got one rectangle. And you, you start with the first small square, and you sew that down, and then you sew that one, and then you sew that one, and then you sew that one, and then you sew that one. So that would be the way you would do it if it was correct. And it's just so beautiful, right? So I'm going, so I'm going to show you how I've chosen to do it with paper, because I'm going to do it different than, glue it down differently than I would have sewn it. Um, because you have a deadline here, or, you know, you're not pre- it's just, I think, a better way to go. But you could go the other way, too. You could start in the middle, or you could start at the end. I've glued down this and this, and I've glued down that. But I want to get to that in a minute, because first I want to show you um, some things to consider in picking your envelope. And um, I want to just mention a couple of the things that I think are important that I learned in my pursuit of mastering this to the extent that I have. <laughs> it's a strong word. Okay, so this would be a really good envelope to use. Right? You're going to take part of this off, depending on what your needs are. Oh, print all your strips on paper. Don't print them on uh, transparent tape for this because of the fact that you're going to have writing if you use junk envelopes. And if you even use new envelopes, you're going to have security paper behind your window. And so when you go over these corners with your first pieces, it's going to show through. So, um... I recommend paper and I used I think 24 pound white the reason this is good is because when I use this envelope I'm going to cover up this window so I have a thick one here a thick amount here this will be one thin one and then I can go as far as I want up here and I will take this out to as far as I can braiding it and then I'll go one or two strips past it and that'll be where I cut it but I won't go past like seven inches all right, so that's a really rare envelope, but the more width you have in the margins, that's what you're looking for. So this is another okay one because you've got the um, thick margin here, plenty here, but it's got the thin and the thin. So that's that should be in the not good category, actually. But the thickness here and thickness here, I think, is why I have it in the good enough category because it's hard to find ones that have thickness on both sides but when you get really big which is what happened with the first couple I showed you when you make them this big then you end up having more space around the window but it, unfortunately in this one it's quite a tiny window so it would be a lot of strips and not a lot of payoff but you could use a die cut and make any size window you want and then put new acetate on it and then you would still have quite a bit to work around. Like I would put it here and then work with that. And if you're going to make a new window, you could even move it over so you've got this whole wide margin, this whole wide margin, this and that. So die cutting your own is definitely a possibility. And then these are the ones that I don't recommend you waste your time on if you want to get that braiding effect. Um, this has three small edges, and it's just a waste of time. This one um, has two small edges. You'd cover up that for sure. So it's not that terrible. 
because this has got some thickness, but it's not great. But this paper behind it is really cute. And then um, this one, same thing. You've got skinny, skinny, wide, wide. At least in this other one, the two wide ones are side by side so that there's room for that braid. This is the worst thing to pick because there's going to be no braiding at all. Everything's going to be a lock because all you have is one, one strip, basically. You might be able to get two out of this, maybe. So that's skinny, super skinny on all three sides and not worth it. All right. So I hope that was useful. And then, um, let's see. Okay. As you're doing this, you want to, if you can use glue stick or, or glue of your choice, but you've got to leave the flaps up. In other words, when you're gluing, When you're, when you're gluing these down and you're, you're, you're attempting to either go over or under, you're going to leave your flaps unglued. So, and, and you can't pre-cut your papers entirely. It would just be too difficult because there's just too much stuff that happens because you can't follow the pattern perfectly where you know it has to be this long to go over and under. There's too much variability that comes into play based on the width of the strips, based on how many you get on this side. You know, if you only had one, there'd be no issue there to, to even consider. Um, I w purposely wanted to. You'll see as you do it. it. It's just better if you just put your glue stick or your glue and you only glue from one end to the other and then leave the paper sticking up unglued and leave this paper sticking up unglued. And I didn't cut my papers off. I cut them kind of short, but I never cut them off until I had absolutely glued something on top of it or I butted it up against something and I knew it was absolutely correct. So you have some flip and flop papers going on for a while, but it saves you trouble later, like, you know, part of the time. Mostly you're going to do fine. But just, I would just hold off on the gluing. I think it's, I think it, just gives you more options. That, that's what it ends up doing. Okay, what else? Um, so if you glue on the paper instead of gluing on the piece itself, then you're likely to run the whole length of the paper before you realize, oh, wait a minute, I'm going to have to put this under or I'm going to have to put this over. And then you've got glue that starts to stick down where you don't want it to. And this is by Avery and it's the stickiest glue I've ever used, glue stick. It is amazing glue, but it also gets mushy at times, I have to say. So I, I you have a lot of sticks that I'm using at one time because once it gets mushy, I put it away and then I take out a one that's solidified more. So I like the glue, but it's not the easiest glue to use sometimes. So once it's down there, it's not as easy to move as some other glues that are in sticks because it's so sticky. You know, Avery, the label people. So those are my tips. Now let's work on the one that I have prepared. So what I recommend you do is you come up with a color scheme and that you pick out the strips that you're going to work with, you know, pre-cut them and pick them out so that you're not um, always picking from a million. It'll, it'll just be too much of a mishmash. You really want to have like three main colors and, and the third color will be a neutral. It'll be a white like this or it'll be, you know, some of the um, aged looking ones that are part of the kits. These are beautiful. So you can go either way. And then they have a gray, a set of gray looking papers. So really you have three different sets of neutrals and if you consider black a neutral then you've got four but there's not that much black. So um, gray, white, beige. So pick a neutral and then pick a, a couple other colors. And they have a lot of different themes. Um, they have a lot of flower ones, they have ones that look like wallpaper, they have ones that look like uh, they're sewing related, they have um, a lot of food ones, a lot of gardening ones, um, that kind of thing. So you can really have fun, kind of pick a theme you like, and then have your alternate pieces have a color that's a smaller color in that strip so that your three colors are kind of determined by 
your favorite papers that you pick. That will narrow it down a lot. And then lay those out. And so, and then you begin. So I'm going to show you, um, now that I've you know, I cut this down, oh, I wanted to show you too. I took pictures as I went along to, um, to get a, a, a glimpse as to whether or not I liked how something looked. Like here I put the flower, I turned this strip this way and I put the flower in the middle. Let me see if I can get this. If I turn this lock off. Okay. Yeah, that's better. So here, this one I put the flower in, you know, face down and here the flower doesn't really show. And I decided that I liked it better with the flower not showing because the focal point to me was going to be that not that in the middle and I also didn't like the postmark there so I flipped that strip around and in this one whoops oh this is not an example of one I've done but um, there's no there's no postmark there so by using your camera judiciously you're able to um, see how it looks and determine if you want to go forward and glue it down you know, this is not probably something you all want to do, but I enjoy it. I think it helps me see the values, and I um, I often wonder, you know, would that be good or bad? And I really like to like what I make. I mean, I really want to like it when it's done. I don't, I don't want to go, oh, I wish I had. I don't want to do that, you know. That's, that's not the way I want to make art. I want to love it. So I'm willing to go through different things to kind of get to the end result I want. So the difference is at this point we're subtle, but I took a lot more pictures than that. I just didn't want to take more time to show you. Okay, let me put this lock on again. All right. So, um, so after you kind of get it figured out what you want to do, then you kind of want to cut, cut them down a little bit, but not too much. And then lay them out in the order that you want them. Although the herringbone is quite easy to recall where they go, it's not on the other ones. And the other ones I just glued and pasted as I went around the square because I wasn't going with the herringbone. And just so you know, just pick one side to start on. I think I started on here. And then you just you go around counterclockwise because of, of the larger part of the envelope being here. There's more options here. So you put, you glue a piece here, you glue a piece here, you glue a piece here, you glue a piece here. Then you glue the next piece here, the next piece here, and then of course it's nothing. And then you glue the next piece here. And then now you're in the third row, and you're in the third row. So it's, that's the way you do it. You go around the circle. You might say, oh, I know I'm gonna want that piece there, but don't glue it down. You've gotta go in the circle to have any opportunity to make choices about the ends and whether or not you can form the braid. So on this piece, I decided that it would be wisest if I laid these on because I wanted them to be completely square for one thing. So I didn't run into that problem where I ended up having this one kind of go down like that. So I thought, oh good. But I also wanted to make sure that this piece stayed central. It might be that my papers have to cover it a little bit and it gets a little bit smaller and becomes more square and less of a rectangle and that's fine with me. Um, but these I wanted them to stay their shape so that's why I chose to go this way. And so the next piece you put the left side of the herringbone is always going to be under. So this piece is going to line up here with the edge and then this is going to be here. You don't have to cut it really super short. You can have some overlap. Um, you know, it just makes it a little more sturdy. But you don't want to have it really go on and on. Just some. Okay. So we're going to glue this down. I hope this is making sense and that you guys are thinking, yeah. I would like to do this. I think it's such a beautiful 
way to show off the strips. And they're endless in the variety. It's really, truly addicting. It's so much fun. Okay, I'm trying to get it as close to the end as possible, edge as possible, because I want to make sure this postmark gets in there. So in other situations, you can have it fall off and it doesn't matter because you can cut it when you're done, of course. But I want this guy to be in view. And I know my next piece is going to go over the top. So I didn't want to fiddle. So now the question is, do I want this white at the top? He only has to go down to there. Let me make sure. Let me look at my picture and make darn sure about that. Yeah, okay. So given that that's the case, I am going to move it down so that my line is lined up with that. You know, wherever you connect lines, it, it causes the eye to follow. This is kind of unfortunate because this goes right into this busy one and your eye actually goes up. And that would not be my ideal to have the full herringbone just really be in your face. But I love this and I love this. And it's just, there's no better place for it. I tried a lot of options. And it's a small piece. So when a piece is small, every scrap in it, every element really counts. When a piece is big, no. But when a piece is small, every element makes a massive contribution or distraction depending okay there we go oh gosh yeah so now you would have in quilting terms another square here so that's the last time you're gonna think about it that way now we're gonna move on to this one okay So school started here for kids today, which is amazing to me, just amazing to me. We always started school in September after Labor Day. So all those little kids are going to school in person, which is so great. Oh, I should have cut that off. Oh, well. Okay. And then this piece is going to go here. Okay. And I saw um, a, a news report that backpacks are now $69 on average. I can't believe it. And um, school supplies are going to cost a few hundred dollars? That just shocks me absolutely shocks me gotta make sure that you completely overlap the edges because the white envelope showing through is not attractive now if you we're talking grade school kids school supplies are going to cost several hundred dollars i'm not talking high school or college <laughs> I mean, it's crazy. And that's just the ones you need at the beginning. That doesn't even include all the stuff that comes along as the semester proceeds. Wow. Okay. And now I want to make sure that I get all of this writing to show on Aubon Marsh. So I am going to... Oh, and I want to make sure that this piece coming down... I mean, I want to make sure that I get the word O oh, Bone Marsh. That it completely shows. So when I have this tucked up where it needs to be, I can see that I need to pull that out. Okay? And I am not crazy about all this showing up here, but I may need the width. So let me see. Now see the width of this and I can't move this down because it'll cover up the F and the C. So the width of this is going to cover up that lettering. So I'm going to chop off some of this top. I'm probably going to be off, yeah, off screen a little bit, but that's okay. 
you know what I'm doing. You don't have to watch that. So even though you pre-cut, when you start to glue, then the real size becomes apparent. And as I said with the other, in the other part about making the length of the flaps, you want to, you know, err on the side of too big and not too small. Because you can always change too big, but you can't change too small. Okay, there we go. So that'll work. Ooh, I'm loving it. Hope you are too. Okay, now the catchy thing for me is to actually glue this where I want it and not anywhere else. So I am going to stick this glue on like this. Okay. Oops, I can see I slipped it a bit. Okay. There we go. Okay, so that's going to work. All right. And then glue this. Now when you're cutting these strips out, I don't know what method's going to work for you. The method that worked for me was not by machine. I just could not get them to be without some white here and there. So I used a ruler and a rotary cutter. In some cases, the white still would be on there in little bits and pieces, so I would distress the edge. And again, it wouldn't ordinarily matter at all, depending on your background, but because you're braiding, or because you're laying these things side by side, every little white area is going to you know, look enormous. Your eye is going to go right to it amongst all this gorgeous color. Or if it doesn't meet well, then the white envelope is going to show and it will look like a line and your eye will be distracted by that and it really will affect the overall outcome. So cut carefully. Use you know, paper, not transparency, for this project. Or, or make other changes so that you don't have to worry about what shows underneath. It might be that you actually make it work in another way. And then... Um, and then cut it bigger than you need it to be but not so big that it's always flopping around because that gets crazy and then um, and then be willing to make some cuts when you're getting down to the bottom of it and you can see where it's going to fall because you don't you know if you have that much envelope showing it's obvious well it might be a little less obvious on that side because it does end in a gray but like if you had a little bit of envelope showing look at that it does not look good. Okay, so now we're going to glue this one. show part of the post post will show and and then that'll be a line so that'll be great be perfect I love that flower I love that so much but it's just it's too big for these delicate flowers over here I felt they needed to be what they were plus I love the blue trumpet flower love trumpet flowers okay so next we're going to put this one yeah, I opted to put the, um, how did I have that? The white, I guess I cut it off so it doesn't matter. Yeah, it had sort of a whiter edge and I cut the whiter edge off. I think it was kind of like a pale gray, but now it looks like both edges are about the same. Yeah, I think I'll go like that. Okay. So then, this is this part is going much faster. This is a absolutely easy pattern. If you're gonna start with the easiest, start with this pattern. Well, the easiest is where you have everything lined up like a square, like a log. That's super easy. This is the next easiest pattern. 
and then the large envelopes with the braiding would be the most difficult. Okay, so now because of the strips, some are wide, some are narrow, <clears throat> you know, they all vary. It ends up that, and this is why I was wondering how it would go, because on all the others I started right around the window and I just let whatever the last ones were be cut off. But this one, you have to have this, you know, sense of V's with some regularity. The kicker was this. If I hadn't used this, it would have been better. So I used a thicker strip here and then a thinner strip here to try to accommodate it. Because I love both these and I wanted this black and white to show. So all that is to say, I need to now make a final decision. You know, do I want to have it overlap that? Do I want to have it overlap that? I kind of just have to go with that angle right there. But I could cut it off on this side because I am overlapping. I think that that overlapping isn't really going to show because there's nothing to compare it to. But I do see some white here. Let's see how even that edge is. See that edge is not perfect. I'm sure it's very difficult for you to tell on the camera. But it's a little wavy. Actually, both sides are a little wavy. So I'm going to just cut off a little bit to make it straighter. And then that will also make it a little bit smaller. And it will overlap a little bit less. But it's still ultimately going to overlap. Okay, so let's see. I just did one side. Yeah, it's still overlaps, so I'm going to do the other side. Plus, now you've got the white coming out to the edge, and on this you've just got the black. So I would prefer that they were more um, equal. Oops. It's not easy cutting little tiny pieces like this, is it? Okay, just the littlest. I mean, I don't think it's, you know, even a sixteenth of an inch. Okay. All right, I'm going to settle with that no matter what, how it turns out. You know, and sometimes you mess it up and then you got to go back in, print another page, and if you don't have any left, I'm saving all my cut strips, even down to tiny, in a separate little baggie with the tall ones. And I'm using up a lot of the small ones when I do things like this. These are all scraps. I didn't cut up a big one for any of this. So save all your pieces. Okay. So there you go. That's just about perfect. The overlap is really not going to be visible once I cut that off. Okay, I'm going to glue that in. I wish I didn't have to distress that. Got a little more distress than I would have liked. Just for the sake of comparison, if I had it like this, then the cherries are going up. I don't think that looks better at all. All right. So ordinarily I glue on there, but I don't know exactly where the edges are going to fall since... There's that overlap, so we'll glue on this. And we will be almost done with this piece. Pretty darn exciting. There we go. Okay. Okay. All right. Now I'm going to cut off the excess. Oops, you obviously want to cut from the back. Be careful not to cut into your envelope, obviously. 
But if you do, then just glue it back real quick. It's not the end of the world. Oh, that was the open end. Okay, and then here. This is the base. That means it would be a. That means I would use the side, I think. Because. Let's see. It opens here, so I think I would. I think I would. Okay, so I would put. I would glue this on the page, and then put a tag in. It goes there and pulls out. That's how I would do it. Because I don't know why, but I just feel like like this is more of a base than this. And I think that's because these two run together. It's not as stable looking. This way it looks top heavy to me. And this way it still looks top heavy. So I would put it on my page this way but to each his own. So that's it, guys. Fun. Super addictive. Super exciting. Get a chance to use some really super duper digitals and photos on the inside. I almost love this one the most because of this little family. I just think this is so perfect with these papers. I can't get over it. This has got that early 1900s look. Stylized, you know, the art. And then this beauty. Now, this is really an early piece. Like, this could even be 1700s, I figure. Um, and I say that because look at how he's dressed. He's got boots with the big, huge cuff or whatever it's called. And he's got the pants that are squished into the top and then the big white collar that's like 1600s dressing or 1700s dressing super long hair the short beard and of course she's embroidering and obviously a lot of money because the windows that that's expensive windows i love this scene so much this is kelly's crafts so there we go so if you have any questions, please leave them in the comments. I hope you will tell me what you think of this. And if you like what I'm showing you, please subscribe. My channel is really new. And so it's exciting when people subscribe. And um, I don't have, you know, I'm averaging about one a week, one or two a week. So it's not, you're not committing to a lot. But if you hit the bell, you'll get notification. And I did find that by putting a, a piece of paper on the inside while I was working on it, it was it was less distracting because the um, paper that came with it was gray. So it, it did not help. But so putting something in that went with that, I thought was really helpful. But one of these has a background that I really like. So when you take the tag out, I think it's this one. Yeah, this background went with the tag. I mean, doesn't it go? I love it. This is a, an original pattern and fabric printing. And I, I really love it. And then this is the tag, which is the remainder of the page um, that she was in. And I just love the color. And then this backing I put on, um, this is actually from a uh, classroom, a college classroom paper my mom turned in. And she wrote in green ink. And she actually got marked down to an A- minus because she used green ink. She loves green, or did. And all of the, the book is in green ink and her beautiful handwriting. And the, um, 
cover is also a green paper and I decided it took me a long time but I decided I'm going to start using those pages because her handwriting is so pretty and her paper was about romantic writers so you know Walt Whitman and different people so she's written the the period times down that she's you know some of these she's covering the romantic period is 1780 to 1832 right in there so she's just showing at the beginning and I thought this was a good background one because you could actually write you could actually put stuff in here if you wanted to and everything that goes in these I suggest you pick very thin thin papers don't use thick stuff because it, it's already going to be bulky with all these papers layered up and then it's inserted into your journal so there's a lot here so that's my findings so, okay guys well I'll see you again Thanks again for spending some time with me. I really am grateful. Have a good day. Take care. Bye-bye.